Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Right as Hurricane Irma was about to hit Florida, Trump bowed his head and did the incredible. President Trump has managed to lead the country through one major national disaster, Hurricane Harvey in Texas and Louisiana, and is already standing by for Hurricane Irma to hit Florida. The president assembled his cabinet in Camp David on Wednesday to make plans for the storm, and before discussions began he did something incredible he bowed his head in prayer. Vice President Mike Pence led the prayer for the entire cabinet. Afterwards, President Trump released a statement detailing his work to address the tragedy and destruction caused by Harvey and Irma, saying, All of America continues to pray for the families affected by Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma which looks like it's really going to be a bad one. But we're prepared. We're as prepared as you can be for such an event. All of America grieves for those who have already lost their lives. It is awesome to have a godly man as president, who works hard for us but also acknowledges a power even higher than his. Near the end of his video President Trump stressed one important thing, urging Americans to stay safe and to take all necessary precautions, property is replaceable, but lives are not. Safety has to come first, just get out of its way. He then went on to assure Americans that my administration is monitoring the situation around the clock. These hurricanes will test our nation's strength, but with leaders like President Trump and his team in the White House, we know we can pull through this together. Share Trump's message of faith and strength to the world. H.T. Washington Examiner Newly leaked report shows Hillary did not win New Hampshire. And Dems are panicking. President Trump won the election fair and square, but more and more evidence keeps piling up that his big win might have been in spite of Democratic voter fraud. First, there was the study suggesting millions of non citizens voted, now there appears to be evidence that thousands of non residents may have actually given a whole state to Hillary Clinton. New Hampshire House Speaker Sean Jasper, R reported numbers on Thursday that indicate more than 6,500 people registered to vote in New Hampshire using out-of-state driver's licenses, Washington Times reports. Since the election, many of those people, most of whom were from nearby Massachusetts, never got an in-state license. Some have suggested the state's same-day registration rules could be to blame, as people from Massachusetts a solidly blue state could travel to New Hampshire, vote and then leave in one day. White House policy adviser Stephen Miller was unsurprised by Jasper's findings, saying, Having worked before on a campaign in New Hampshire, I can tell you that this issue of busing voters into New Hampshire is widely known by anyone who's worked in New Hampshire politics. It's very real. It's very serious. This morning, on the show, is not the venue for me to lay out all the evidence. Leave it to Democrats to travel for miles around just to tell other people how they should be governed, in a state they don't even live in. Here's the three numbers you need to know. 6,540 people registered and voted on the same day November 8, by showing out-of-state licenses. About 5,300 of those people had not received a New Hampshire driver's license or registered a vehicle in New Hampshire several months later. President Trump lost New Hampshire by 2,736 votes. This seems like pretty strong evidence of suspicious voting activity, with real consequences for elections. Don't be surprised if you don't hear the media advertise this though, and this absolutely needs to get out there so share it loud and proud, patriots. H.T. Washington Times Omarosa just got the worst news of her life from Trump that changes everything. Trump's new chief of staff, John Kelly, is no nonsense for sure. Trump brought him in to help him straighten things out in the White House, and that's just what he's doing. Before he arrived in the Oval Office, 
People just came and went pretty much whenever the whim struck, but no more. Now, some aides that previously could wander about in the Oval Office, have been frozen out. And Momorosa is one of them. Apparently, according to The Hill, she is considered unfit for serious meetings. Omarosa has been serving as Trump's chief advisor for African American issues. But I wonder if this could have had anything to do with her demotion. I mean, that kind of resembled an episode of The Jerry Springer Show. A bit out of control and clearly, the interaction made some people uncomfortable. While she did appear to be defending Trump, how she went about it does seem to be the sort of thing Kelly is trying to clean up in the White House. Reportedly, she has been placed on a no-fly list. According to Fox News, Omarosa could not be reached for comment. Do you like what Trump and Kelly are doing in the White House? Comment yes or no and share to gather all comments. Right after Bill Maher said sick thing about Trump supporters, his audience does something even worse. Hurricanes Harvey and Irma have put the best of America on display, and the worst. After Hurricane Harvey tore through Houston, Texas, the true spirit of American kindness could be seen. Volunteers descended upon the city and donations came flooding in from across the country. And then there was Hollywood. While regular Americans suffered, the Hollywood elite used these hurricanes to bash President Donald Trump. Earlier this week, Jennifer Lawrence claimed that Mother Nature seemed to be punishing Americans for voting for someone other than Hillary Clinton. Now, HBO host Bill Maher seems to be taking that theory even further. During a monologue on his show, Maher gleefully noted that Trump, Rush Limbaugh, and Coulter, and the Koch brothers all have property that will be wiped out by the storm. I'm not gloating, he added, but his smile gave his true intentions away. He is happy that Hurricane Harvey is destroying the lives of Trump supporters. If that weren't enough, the leftist host then played scientist and claimed that climate change was the major contributing factor to these catastrophic weather events. By denying this theory, Marr suggested that the destruction of conservative property was well-deserved. Meanwhile, his entire audience cheered through the disgusting spectacle. Share if you think Marr needs to be taken off fair for his terrible remarks. Right after Colbert mocked Trump with Nazi salute, Tucker Carlson ripped him to shreds with one question. You know, President Trump has been absolutely hammered in the media for his response to the Charlottesville riots, claiming he did not call out white supremacist and neo-Nazi groups when he in fact did multiple times. Just when you think that nonsense had died down and the media could go on to reporting news that actually matters, Comedian Stephen Colbert brings it back to a whole new sick level. During an episode of The Late Show on Friday, Colbert lambasted former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon for saying he defended President Trump's Charlottesville comments, but that's not all. Colbert then proceeded to prove whatever point he was making by doing a Nazi salute. This is sick beyond belief, and that fellow leftists didn't see it and call him out is even more baffling. Tucker Carlson was paying attention at least and called Colbert out big time, saying, Can we agree that is out of bounds? Jeffrey Lord just got canned from CNN for making reference to that regime but it's okay here. How? Carlson's guest Joe Concha then brought down the hammer. This is late night comedy in 2017. It's unhinged hate. And there is no line anymore to go over because there ain't no line. It is it all anything goes. Then he points at Colbert's total hypocrisy. Look, last week, or at the beginning of this week, Stephen Colbert mocked President Trump's reaction to Hurricane Harvey, and here's the bottom line, while Trump was in Texas twice, Stephen Colbert was on vacation for two weeks, and he had the time and the resources to go there and do something himself but instead, he mocks people from afar. And I think that's all you need to know about the person Stephen Colbert is. He ended. That's the true punchline. Boom. You know, I miss late night comedy that was actually funny and not a total hate fest. 
This latest Hitler homage is beyond sick, and Colbert's network needs to know this is not okay, so let's get this out there by sharing 10,000 times. HD Real Clear Politics